So here's the same production function we looked at in the last screencast. Now let's calculate the average product of labor. So the formula is the total output divided by the total input, in this case the quantity of labor. Let's have an average product of labor column added to our table. Zero divided by anything is going to be zero. Some books will put a dash here instead of a zero. 30 divided by 6 is 5. 96 divided by 12, 8. 162 divided by 18 is 9, 8, and 5. The trend that we see here where average product of labor first increases and then decreases is a very typical trend. So the top graph is our total product function, our production function that we found in our last screencast where quantity of output is a function of labor. I'm going to again put labor on the horizontal axis, but on the vertical axis I'm going to plot the average product of labor. I'll drop down my labor units, the 6, 12, 18, 24, and 30, and now I'll go back to the table that we just created and plot those points. So for the sixth worker, our average product of labor is 5. For the twelfth, it's 8, 18 and 9, 24 and 8, 30 and 5. If I connect these dots, that's my average product of labor. So the general trend where it increases then decreases is something you'll see quite often. It won't necessarily be symmetric like this is, where it's always 5, 8, 9, 8, and 5. Let's do the same thing but for the marginal product of labor. So its formula is the change in output divided by the change in input. In this case, if I'm looking for the marginal product of labor, I'll use the change in labor. So adding a column to my table. Now the modern product of labor, when output is zero, is always going to start with a dash. If output is positive, it won't necessarily start with a dash. Now the numerator will be 30 minus zero, or 30. The denominator will be 6 minus zero, or 6, giving me a marginal product of labor of 5. Moving on, 96 minus 30 will be the numerator. 12 minus 6 will be the denominator, or 66 divided by 6, giving us a marginal product of labor of 11. Following the same format, we get our marginal product of labor, noticing that the last one, our marginal product of labor, is negative. This can happen and often does. So the trend here is marginal product of labor typically increases, then decreases, and can go negative. Let's plot it on a graph. So again, the horizontal axis will be labor, but now the vertical axis will be the marginal product of labor. So I can drop down those values of labor and then plot my points. So 6 and 5, 12 and 11, 18 and 11, 24 and 5, 30 and negative 7. Connecting those, I can label it MPL.